All right, welcome to Fluent and Chill NFL Edition. I'm Anthony K. I'm here as always with my main man, Jay Dub. Jay, how you doing, man? Football season. Food and food and football today. Absolutely, man. All right, we're, all, we're all a little full. We're all going to be full. When, when you're watching this, you're going to be very full um, after a nice Thanksgiving. It's Black Friday, I guess, technically today. Are we allowed to say Black Friday anymore? Is that still a thing? It, it is. is. You, thing? Can, you can say that. The deals aren't as good as they used to be. They may not. It's, it's, I feel like I feel like it used to be better. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's just like, you know, I saw one. It's like 15 percent off. I'm like, I get 15 percent off all the time. That's the tax. What is that? That's nothing. 50 percent. Like, I, 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 I expect more. Good. So so this week, we're obviously going to make all of our Sunday, Monday picks because we've already made our Thanksgiving Day mm -hmm. picks. We're going to go through the slate of games. Uh, let everybody know uh, what we think. And we're going to go through last week's game. Mm -hmm. If you can believe it, there was only three games we missed on last week. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about those real quick. And we're going to talk, but we're going to kick the show off. <laughs> kick the show off. Uh, I didn't mean to do that, but we're going to kick the show off with a COVID toe or a broken good. toe uh, <laughs> from A.A. Ron, as mm -hmm. uh, Key, Key and Peel would say. So Aaron Rodgers, broken toe. I don't know why. It, I, I don't know why the whole COVID toe thing, really, to be honest with you. But mm -hmm. how does that how does that affect Aaron Rodgers, the broken toe. Well, he's a mobile quarterback. And not only is he a mobile quarterback, you know, when you got a broken bone in your foot, it your balance is off. You know, you got a pain tolerance that you have to deal with. And Aaron Rodgers running, that's a huge part of his game. Him not just not him, not just him running, him throwing on the run, him running to create plays. That's a huge part of his game. And it's not not a big deal. Like people are saying, well, it's not that big of a deal. He's got a broken foot. That's a problem. And it's going to be a huge problem. Yeah, and well, and listen, with the broken—I don't know if you've ever broken a toe before, but it's not like you can't cast it up or splint it. No, up. you just deal with it. That's it. Um, and just you know, nothing. There's really nothing. It's you know, throw some ice on it, and you know, on, on your way. So, do you think? Does it take away? Like, do you think it's going to make major issues? Like, maybe he's not as mobile anymore. Take a few sacks. Doesn't run as often. Do you think, or does he well, just? Is he the well, type of guy that just works through it? Well, I think that he's going to work through it, but I do think that it's going to affect him tone. Again, we're talking about Aaron Rodgers, who takes a lot of three-step and a lot of five-step drops, even seven-step drops. So if my foot is broken, that's going to affect my mobility. And Aaron Rodgers makes plays a lot with his legs. So with a broken foot, I'm not going to be able to do that and be as effective as much. Now, what I, what I don't want to do, Tone, is I don't want to blame that primarily on him, his foot. Because, and the reason why I don't want to do that is because he's going to play. So if you're out there, that tells me that you're ready to go. So yeah. I don't want to come. I don't want to do that. However, this is going to be an issue. And it's not like they have uh, easy competition this week. No, they right. Don't. They, they've got the Rams. Mm -hmm. So you're already dealing with Aaron Jones being out, which is mm -hmm. a huge part of their offense. I think people underestimate how important the running game is to the Packers and to Aaron Rodgers. Um, so Aaron Jones is out. I do like AJ Dillon as mm -hmm. kind of that bruiser, but I like him as a one, two with Aaron Jones, we saw last week, he didn't do exceptionally well on his own. Now the Rams are coming in. They've got Vaughn Miller. Uh, there's another guy on that defensive line, Aaron Donald, I think his name is, yeah. who's pretty good. So they're, yeah. they, you know, they're going to go after and test him. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have, so we're going to do a little pre pick before we do our full picks. If you had, if you had the Packers coming into this, do you change your mind now because because of, of the injury, or do you still? Well, it has me. Is thinking it more Aaron different. Jones or more the toe, or is it more the Rams? It's more the Rams, it, and it has me thinking a little bit differently now because of what the Rams have done. I mean, they got smoked when they played against the Niners, and then last week, I mean, they they, they came out pretty solid. But when I'm thinking about what the Rams are doing, Von Miller and Aaron Donald, they 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 getting back together. They're getting together. They're not getting back together. I'm sorry. They're getting together. And with Jalen Ramsey in that defense, they're going to be all over Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. And his ability to get out of the pocket and run, because that pocket is going to collapse. So I have to take that under consideration. I think that the Rams, I think that they got a really good shot at handling them this week. Okay. Yeah, I, and it's it's interesting. I had been, I'd been saying the Packers, and it's, you know, I, I think the Rams have started to look a little, ever since the trade, I don't think it had anything to do with OBJ, but ever since the trade, they haven't looked kind of, the same mm -hmm. Matthew Stafford has started to look like Detroit lion, Matthew Stafford. Mm -hmm. And, and I said that was going to continue, but now 
like I don't want to use it as an excuse, but like I said, Aaron Jones, the toe, there's there's little kind of chinks in that armor that I think mm-hmm. might make it a little bit more difficult. So that being said, our picks from last week. So I'm actually pretty impressed. So here are the three that we got wrong. And one of them obviously is, is going to be, let's start with that one since we're already talking Green Bay. Green Bay, Minnesota. Um, field goal in overtime or at the end of the game, whatever. I think it was an overtime. Green, what happened? Is Was Justin, it just the Aaron Jones thing or was it Justin Jefferson going? Just, off? Justin Jefferson. Justin yeah. Jefferson going off. They really couldn't do anything with him. And I was extremely happy with what Justin Jefferson did. I was surprised at Kirk Cousins because Kirk Cousins usually in primetime games, he isn't very good. And in this particular situation, he was really good against Green Bay. He was good against the rush. He was good getting rid of the football. I can't say that that Minnesota defense was great, but I think that they no, did. They gave up 31 points. It's not, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah. But they, I think they did as well as they could against that yeah. Green Bay offense. And I think that Kirk Cousins and Jefferson was the difference in that game. And I yeah. was really I was pleasantly surprised with, with Jefferson. You know, it's funny because coming into the season – I had Jefferson kind of up there as one of the top receivers in the game, and and he is. I had him at a top ten receiver. Yes, I did. Yeah, for, yeah, absolutely. And just you know, he's had he's been nice, like, it, but he hasn't really been great. But I put a lot of that on Kirk Cousins, right? Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, he just he had a breakout game this week, mm-hmm. um, and I think that's what carried them through. So, but no long term, you think that was just a one of those really good games played by Minnesota division I do. Game I do. kind of thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. I do. The other one we both got wrong in this one, this is what I expected from Tennessee three weeks ago when they lost Adrian Peterson. Uh, sorry. <laughs> that's who they have now. Excuse me. When they lost right. Derek Henry. Right. Um, this is what I expected from them. W- was it just kind of like adrenaline rush those first two weeks that carried the defense through? And now this is who we're going to see. Or again, was it just a an anomaly against Houston? I think that was an, to get dominated by Houston the way they did. I mean, that offense completely sputtered. They got nothing going on offense whatsoever, and I'm not buying that. That was Ryan Tannehill, and I mean Adrian Peterson. I mean, he did have nine rushes for 40 yards, so it wasn't like he was completely trash. He he did do well. It was just that defense. They just they looked out of sorts the offense they julio jones didn't look like he was engaged they just looked like they were all over the place maybe that was a trap game maybe it you, was th- you think it's one of those they yeah, yeah. They, they thought hey here's we've been playing so great since we lost henry hey, no problem tone right. they got a they got a one in eight houston team coming in here what other ex- what other ex- not excuse, but what other reason can you see them losing the way they did i really think that they they looked at houston and they looked past Houston. They will handle these dudes. Only except, no, you didn't. You have to play every Sunday. And they didn't do that. This is the second time. The second time that we've said a team didn't take another team serious. And it's just like, we say any given Sunday mm-hmm. for a reason. Right? You can't take these games lightly. And no. it's not like you have an 82 or 162 game season to, ah, you know, we, we can lose one. No, you got to win every game that you can. Mm-hmm. And that's the what, and that's the ones that separates, you know, the teams that are going to go to the Super Bowl and the teams that aren't going to go to the Super Bowl is when you have mm-hmm. a team that you should beat, you beat them. You yep. just you have to. So I was really surprised uh, that there was such a letdown from them because they're going to be in the same boat as Buffalo. Can they get it back and going again? Because mm-hmm. uh, like I said, that defense looks so good, <clears throat> and then just not uh, against Houston. So I think I think that's one that everybody got wrong. And then the last one, this was a this was a toss game. We both went with Carolina, you know, Cam Newton thinking he's gonna come back in, be the starter, and kind of carry them to a win. Mm-hmm. Washington comes in, Tyler Henneke looks good again. Um, and they beat Carolina. Mm-hmm. And then, I, I, again, I know that one was a pick kind of a pick'em game, but are you su- we obviously both picked Carolina, so I guess there's somewhat of, of a surprise that Washington won. What did you see from Washington that got them the win? Heineke, man, he looked really good in the pocket. That run game actually looked really good. And McLaurin looked McLaurin. really good. McLaurin looked really good. And he, he's becoming more of Heineke's target as the weeks go on. He looks yeah. like him and Heineke are just getting more and more on the same page. When I look at Carolina, I mean, it's the first game that Christian McCaffrey and Cam have played in five years. This is the first time they've played together since they yeah. – I think it was like five. No, not not that long. I'm sorry. Three. I think three seasons since they've been together. So they've got to get themselves back on the same page. But I told him I'm pretty sure that that Carolina team 
I think they undefeated in the NFC South. I don't think they've lost in the NFC South yet. Yeah, I, I think they're still going to be okay. Yeah. Um, but it's just, I was surprised to see Washington. You know, McLaurin's an interesting one because he was like, from a fantasy perspective and a real football mm-hmm. perspective, I'm going to bring up the fantasy because I have him on my team. And I said, when, when it was Fitzpatrick, I said, mm-hmm. hey, that's your sleeper guy. Everybody go out and draft McLaurin. Cause, and then once Fitzpatrick goes down, I'm like, uh, I don't know how I feel about it. But now he's showing that you know, quarterback. It's less quarterback dependent. He's yeah. he's he's legit. So uh, for sure, I think that was the deciding factor in that game. I still think Carolina is going to be fine. Washington, Carolina, right? They're they're going to be middle of the pack teams. So that brings us to this week. Mm-hmm. We got a good slate of games, but I'm going to start with. Let me see if I'm going to start with a good one because yeah, I'm going to start with a good one. Um, I'm just pulling up my list here. So you know, I love divisional games, mm-hmm. fighting for the top. Five, four, and one against six and four. So you got the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Cincinnati Bengals. Bengals coming off a nice game. Looked mm-hmm. like they were done. And now they look, oh, they're back. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pittsburgh has been, I don't want to say inconsistent this season, but due to injuries and some other things, you know, you, you never really know what you're going to get from Pittsburgh, right? Right. So that's what's team. called that's what that's what's caused the inconsistency with the Steelers tone is the fact that you have had so many guys in and out the lineup. Yeah. You know, you has been hurt. Ben Roethlisberger's been hurt. So there's th- that continuity hasn't been there for the entire season because you've had guys in and out of the lineup. Now, as far as the Cincinnati Bengals, you and I had this conversation before the season started. I'm big on Cincinnati. I think Cincinnati's going to the playoffs, and I think that they're gonna make some noise in the playoffs. And I think they handled Pittsburgh this weekend. So you got Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. I think they handle Pittsburgh this weekend. I have a heavy, heavy dose of Najee Harris and in a Pittsburgh win in a close one. It's going to be when when you get divisional games. There's I don't think either team's going to blow them out, um, but I think it's you know it's going to be like a field goal kind of difference mm-hmm. in the game. But I I, th- I actually got Pittsburgh. The surprising Colts, at, le- at least surprising last week. They looked good last week, six and five. Against the seven and three Bucks, who had lost two in a row, didn't you know? Obviously, came out played really well um, on I think on Monday night. Granted, mm-hmm. it was against the the Giants, but um, so they end their losing streak. I guess two game losing streak, but now they're facing a pretty good Colts team. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, Tom hasn't been very good on the road this season. So, with that being said. I'm rolling with the Colts in this because I love what Jonathan Taylor is doing. Wentz can be a little reckless from time to time. Yeah, Yeah, but when you have a guy like uh, Jonathan Taylor to kind of rely on, because he looked fantastic last week. Yes, yes, he he looked great. I mean, to 32 rushes for 185 yards and five touchdowns, that is incredible. So I think that, I think that the Colts handled the Bucks this week. Tom hasn't really been that good on the road and that Tampa Bay Bucks defense it's been sputtering of late. Yeah, they're 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 banged up a little bit, but I'm more concerned about their secondary than yeah. their than their front. And I think, and, go ahead. You know, some people, you know, that defense hasn't been bad. They beat they they only gave up ten points to the Giants. That Giants offense is trash. Yeah, I mean, let, 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 yeah. let's let's not even take it there. That yeah. the offense that offense is trash with the Giants. So I'm not buying that at all. I I know that this is nothing purely but gut. However. I don't feel like you're going to get a back-to-back Jonathan Taylor, that type of game. Mm. And I think that's what they're going to need to beat the Bucs. And so the Bucs kind of weakness on, on offense is the secondary. And that means maybe they, they load up the box and stop Jonathan Taylor, or at least try to, and, and try to let Carson Wentz. If, if they're going to beat them, it's going to be on Carson Wentz's arm. That I don't trust. So I'm gonna go with the Bucks. I don't know, Tone. Just so you know, you know Jonathan Taylor. He the reason why no, we don't I talk know, about I know, I know. The reason why we don't talk about Jonathan Taylor is because there's a guy in that division, right? Oh, that, I know. That's why. That's why we don't talk about him. But you know, he he leads the league in rushing and rushing touchdowns. I just want to put that out there. Uh, no, I, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you, and we're gonna get to him in a minute here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor's nice. I just listen. That's that's my gut. I said mm-hmm. it's, it's purely gut. Yeah. All right. The Panthers. We talked about the Panthers a little bit earlier. So we got mm-hmm. the Panthers. Um, and the Dolphins, mm-hmm. the Dolphins are another one of those teams I never know what I'm going to get from. Um, however, I think after the loss last week, I think Cam McCaffrey they figures they figure it out, and I and I think they go 
they go to Miami and and they get the win. My gut tells me that Miami is going to beat them this week, Tom. Ooh, I th- we're different on every single game. My gut tells me that Miami is going to beat these dudes this week. Okay. I know, I know that they played the Jets, and <laughs> anybody can get their confidence going against the Jets. Fair enough. My gut is telling me that Miami is going to beat these dudes this week. All right, and it has nothing to do with you being, like, down in South Florida, right? I am not a South Florida <laughs> guy. I am not a Miami Miami Dolphins guy. No, I'm not. All right. Um, so so speaking, you had said Jonathan Taylor, no one talks about him because the other running back in his division. So the Titans now, oh, tough matchup this week against the Patriots. Mm-hmm. Um, Derrick Henry obviously is the reason we don't talk enough about Jonathan Taylor because when he's healthy, there's talk. There's talk. If you can believe it, there is talk that if if they're if they and look, they're they still sit atop the AFC at eight and three. Mm-hmm. So they should be in the playoffs. Um, that he's going to be back. Derrick Henry might be back in time for the playoffs. There is talk. I, I, I have heard that. And so uh, he would be welcome, Tom. Let's make sure that we yeah, oh, 100%. Even though, even though Adrian Peterson is toting the rock for them, but Derrick Henry would absolutely be welcome. I think that there is some, uh, there's still some, some sour feelings about how Tennessee handled the Patriots two seasons ago in the playoffs. I think there's still some sour feelings about that. And I think Belichick remembers that. Mm-hmm. And the way that the Patriots are rolling right now, I think that they handle Tennessee. I am 100% with you because you know how I feel about the Patriots. I am high on the Patriots. Mm-hmm. Like I said I think they're going to win the AFC East. I think they're going to be in the AFC Championship game. In mm-hmm. fact, I, they, they have a shot. We'll see how the rest of the season goes. They have a shot of representing the AFC in the Super Bowl. Yeah, and we've never had a rookie quarterback win a Super Bowl ever. Watch out this year; it might happen. So yeah. that so that's the next game. Eagle, another. I love these division games. I really do. Even when it's not great teams, although the Eagles have looked much better. Mm-hmm. Um, Eagles and Giants. Giants coming off a tough Monday nighter. Yeah. Um, now they face now the divisional game against kind of a, a resurgent Philadelphia team. Tom, we get into the point of the season where we're starting to get some separation with teams, where you're starting to see teams be who they are. And I think the Giants are who they are. I was big on them early before the season started, and I was wrong. I think Philadelphia handles them. I don't know if Jalen Hurts is their guy in terms of them getting to the bowl game, but I do think he's their quarterback. I absolutely believe that they're going to build it around him, and I think they handle the Giants this week. The Giants fired Jason Garrett, which – I think it was a good thing because, uh, but you you I, like I, offensive guys getting fired in the middle of the season. <laughs> I do, uh, especially especially if it helps our offense. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, and so I think look now that the Giants are going to have you know, but you still think Philly wins, yeah? I think Philly yeah. handles them. Yes, I do. I think you're going to see a better offensive kind of scheme from the Giants this week. I think you're going to see more from Daniel Jones. I think I think Saquon Barkley's now maybe is this the week that he kind of starts to get it back into his groove? Mm-hmm. I don't know. But I don't think it's enough. I, and I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm on. I'm on the Eagles uh, this week. Falcons and Jet. Man, the Falcons. You know, I want to say they've just looked horrible. But at the same time, you know, I, I can't even put it on 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 Matt Ryan because no Calvin Ridley, no, and I can't even believe I'm saying this. No Cordell Patterson, who's become a big part of their offense. Yeah. So so really, he's he's kind of left there alone to kind of yeah. figure it out. So Atlanta's not looking good. Can the Jags get their third win of the season? No, I think the, I think Atlanta gets back to 500 this week. I do. I think they get back to 500. I had Kyle Pitts as my offensive rookie of the year before the season started. And I think that they get back to back to 500. I I think that I think Atlanta loses. I think, mm-hmm. I think Jacksonville in another I, I, at some point we're gonna it's gonna stop being a surprise but i just think i think jacksonville gets this win i think mm-hmm. matt ryan and that offense just he can't just throw exclusively to kyle pitts they don't have a running game they really don't have any other offensive weapons it, i feel bad for them because all healthy they're pretty mm-hmm. good offense but yeah i think the jags take this one your favorite team the jets has, has there ever been two two and eight teams that you look at so differently, right? Like the Jets are two and eight, and everyone's like, oh, they're trash. The Houston uh Texans are two and eight, and you're kind of like, hey, they're coming off a pretty good win. You know, they 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 play they're well. trash too, Tone. Knock it off. They're trash no, too. Is- okay. <laughs> they are trash too. So, and I'm looking at this game. I think Houston gets the Jets. I think they handle them. That's as far as I'm gonna go with that. 
All right. When it, well, I'm just comparing those two teams. So, when you compare yeah. them, I, and I'm with you, I, I got the Texans over the Jets. No, we're not going to talk much about that one. Um, the, ooh, this is, the, I don't know if you might have to abstain from, from picking this game because your team that you thought was going to represent the AFC in the AFC championship game, and you still might, is going against the team that you kind of been having an affair on your 49ers with. So we got the Chargers and the Broncos. Are, are you allowed to make a pick? I am. Is it going to be a tie? Quietly. quietly a tie? I, I am allowed to make a pick, but quietly. And I just like what Justin Herbert and that and that Chargers team has been doing. I like They look really good against Pittsburgh. Him and Mike Williams look like they're getting back on the same page. Him and Keenan and, and, and Keenan Allen, they also getting getting back on the same page. So I'm looking at this Charger team, and I love Denver quietly. I do, but I think the Chargers handled them this weekend. Yeah. What I've seen this season from the Chargers, and I know it goes against your early season prediction of them being, and I love Justin Herbert as well, don't get me wrong, but this is the kind of game that the Chargers lose. Mm. You know, it's 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 a t- it's the type of game that, you know, it's it's close, right? If you look at the odds, it's I think the Chargers are two and a half point favorites, so it's mm. it's close. And it's one that they probably should win in a tight matchup. But it's one that Denver's gonna win, in my opinion. So I'm gonna go. Already, I'm gonna go with the Broncos. Already, I think they already had their slump, Tom. I, I think, think their slump I, is over. I, okay. I think they already had their slump. I think they added that. All right. So let's. Uh, we we talked a lot about this game. So let's just make our picks. Rams, Packers. I think you said you're going with the Rams. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with the Pack. Even mm-hmm. with the even with the toe and no Aaron Jones, I think I think AJ Dillon has a big game, and they figure out how to utilize that play action again. Mm-hmm away from i think they run away from aaron donald and i think they play action pass away from jalen ramsey enough mm. to get the win you can uh, run but you can't hide tom and, and and let's be honest <laughs> the packers i know that the packers isn't a great defense right however they do know matthew stafford oh, and, I, and i think that comes in i think that comes in it's you're gonna see there's gonna be a point where like yeah and they knew matthew stafford and that's how they get it mm-hmm. uh vikings big win yeah. against the pack last week Against your 49ers, who yep. wow, they look good. Hey man, it's like a different team. Mm-hmm. And by the way, this is this is for playoff positioning, yeah. right? Yeah, and now the, the degrees has been turned up, and we know what happens when the degrees gets turned up on Mr. Kirk Cousins. So I'm gonna roll with my Niners on this one. I think we handle Minnesota. I told you this, I think. Um when you said to me, and it sounded probably ridiculous to some people at the time, was that they can go on, I think it was like, if they go six and two or five and three, I forget what it was. And I said, I said, the, the 49ers have a legit shot of sneaking up now and making the playoffs. Yeah. And nobody wants to play the 49ers because of that defense. Because when they start running the ball, like what they did, I think it was against the, it was the Rams game, I think, where they just kind of mm-hmm. ran over everybody. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. I think the 49ers get the win. And, and if you're a team like fighting for that 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 um, that bye week, mm-hmm. right? I think it's the Packers and and whoever you want the bye week because I don't think you want to face the 49ers in that first round. Nope. I don't think you do. So that's that's going to be an interesting one. Then we go to an, man. There's a lot of there's a lot of divisional games this week with a lot of playoff implications. A lot of playoff implications. Yeah, both mm-hmm. the Vikings and Niners are both five and five. The next mm-hmm. one, they're six and five, seven and three. The team that I picked to win the AFC North against the team that you picked to win the AFC North. And we got the Browns and the Ravens. The Ravens, you know. I I know who Baltimore is. And I know that they go as Lamar Jackson goes. I mean, they look, Tyler Huntley, I mean, he stepped in last week. And they look good. But getting Lamar Jackson back next week, last time they, they dominated Cleveland the last time that they played them. And, I already know who Cleveland is in terms of their defense, but offensively, Baker Mayfield just – he just scares me. Just I, say, I, it. I, say, say it. I you can't don't, tell him. You I, don't I, what? I, what? What I, don't you do with Baker Mayfield? I don't trust him. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't trust Finally him. Finally on my side. <laughs> I don't trust him. And I was big on Cleveland before the season started. I was a big Cleveland guy before the season started. And – He's losing my trust. Yes. So I think Baltimore handles them this week. And let me say this for all the, I'll say it, hate on Baker Mayfield I've spewed out this season. Let me just say 
And I want to reiterate because every time I've said I don't trust Baker Mayfield, he's the worst quarterback in the league. And by that, I mean any other quarterback could come in and, and, and they'd, be, they'd have the same record. I like Cleveland and I like the Browns. Like I like the rest of their team. I've said this to you before at the, at the skill positions their their wide receivers, their running backs, their tight ends, their defense, up. right? I, I like everything about Cleveland, except, except offensive line, defense, everything. The except only thing I don't like is Baker Mayfield. This and I guy. think, you know, I get it. If you're a Cleveland fan, you got to get behind your quarterback and he's your guy and you'll defend him to the death. But, like, if you sit quietly in your room and you're like, man, if we had a different quarterback, we'd probably be legit, legit Super Bowl contenders. That's how good this team is. They're not even behind them, Tone. You, they're booing uh, them. Now they're booing <laughs> Look how long it took them, though. It took them, uh, what, six, 11 games. And he's like, oh, I'm hurt. Why are you booing me? You're, we're booing you. Or they're booing you. We're booing you. I'm booing them, too. Because you're not playing well. You, you should have lost to the Lions. You're lucky it was the Lions. Like, you're lucky it was the Lions and they let they like you know why do you kick a field goal there? Boom! You need a touchdown, Lions. Why are you kicking the field goal? But anyways, so I'm clearly going with the, <laughs> with the Ravens. Um, am I getting any pushback? Are you Ravens? Or no, um, I'm going with Baltimore. I think oh, Baltimore, Baltimore handles them. Yes. So we're both on the Ravens. And then that takes us to the Monday nighter. The surprisingly bad. You know, I'm starting to think, I wonder if Russell Wilson would have been happier had he stuck to his guns this offseason and got out of Seattle. Mm. Because, listen, he flirted with Chicago, so you know I would have been happy. Not that I'm looking forward forward to a future with Justin Fields. Mm -hmm. However, hey, man, there's Russell Russell Wilson. So surprisingly bad Seattle Seahawks team uh, against, uh, I don't know what I'm going to get, a Washington football team. Uh, so who you, who do you have? Well, not surprisingly bad, Tom. We got to take into consideration Russ missed a month. Well, yeah, and fair enough. You and I have had this conversation, and I, I stand on it, that you're only as good as your backup quarterback. And if you could get your backup quarterback, so the prime example of what's happening in Arizona with Colt McCoy, what he's doing and just keeping them afloat. Right. They lose Russ. That sunk them. Yeah. I think that they're out of the playoff race. They're three and seven. I think that they're out. They're out. And – you're only as good as your backup quarterback. So I don't think that that Seattle team was that bad. Bobby Wagner leads the league, or he's second in the league in tackles. That defense is stout. The problem is, is Russ got hurt. Had Russ not gotten hurt, I think that they would have been right in the middle of it. Yeah, so unfortunately, at three, like, wow. They're, they're the only team below them in the standings is the Detroit Lions. Yeah. Like, they're, they're tied with – in terms of record, but when tie breaks and all that go into effect, mm-hmm. too, they're they're behind the three and seven Bears and the three and seven Giants. Um, so they're yeah they're 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 not making the playoffs. Let's be honest. No, but, but can they get a win? Or does Washington, who still has playoff aspirations, mm-hmm. right at four and six, they're only one win out of what is the five and five? Uh, who holds it now? Uh, New Orleans mm-hmm. hold, holds that last wild card berth. I like what Washington is doing, Tom. Can they put it together? I do. I like what Washington is doing, man. I I like what they're doing offensively more than anything. I like what they're doing. And, I mean, they held, if I'm not mistaken, they held Carolina to seven points in the second half of of that game. So, I like what Washington's doing. I think they can handle Seattle. I think they absolutely handle them. Listen, I'm I'm on the Tyler Henneke bandwagon. And Mm -hmm. I think that he showed something last year in the playoffs. And he's starting to get his confidence. Look, do I think he's an elite, you know, lead your team for 10 seasons QB? Probably not. However, I think he's a really serviceable gap starting quarterback until Mm -hmm. you get that person. And I think, yeah, I I think the team's behind him. And Mm -hmm. I think with, you know, McLaurin playing really well and Washington just kind of scheming better than they have most of the season. Mm -hmm. I've got Washington. I don't know if it's an upset, but I have Washington. Um, Let's see who's the, uh, they're, they're the favorite by one and a half. So mm-hmm. it, it's, it is Washington. So I won't call it an upset, but I think historically mm-hmm. when you think of Washington, Seattle, it's an upset. So I think he reminds me, uh, he kind of got a Jeff Garcia thing going on with him where, you know, he's not a franchise quarterback, but he's good enough to get you there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, yeah, that's actually a really good comparison. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm on Washington as well. Um, so we'll go through uh, and we'll come back. We'll, we'll see how we did. Mm-hmm. Any final thoughts on this week in the NFL? 
Not much, man. Like I said, food and football. Absolutely. Food and football. We had, you- we had, uh, we had, we had Thanksgiving yesterday. So, you know, we had good football yesterday and we're going to have some really good football on Sunday. So it should be good. What do you, for Thanksgiving, do you, for me, I, I make it like a four day thing. Because I'm because I'm pretty much eating turkey right Saturday Sunday is, and I'm right. watching as much fo- like it's literally Thursday it's it's football and food like from Thursday to Sunday right um it even probably spills into like a turkey sandwich on Monday but is that do you do kind of the same thing or just like I, I, know, it's I, not, I, I know it's not turkey right I, I used I, I but now that now that you know the holidays are here and it's always been like that with, regardless of what I'm eating from Thursday to Sunday with Thanksgiving it's food and football it's nothing else. Absolutely not. I'm gonna go get some exercise later. I was I, I went and got some exercise yesterday earlier, and then came back, and it was food and football, and it's gonna be food and football all this weekend. Listen, I don't know what that word is, the exer word thing you use, but maybe one, maybe next week you can talk to me about what that means. What's ex- exercise? I don't I don't know what that is. Uh, I'm not necessarily. <laughs> Not, put not, one, put not, one not familiar, foot, not familiar with put that. One foot in front of the other toe. If, unless you mean you, like getting, getting the sweat like going this. on. That, that, that's, that's, that's my exercise. That right there. I'm doing, exercise, I'm doing, no. I'm doing drumstick <laughs> curls is what I'm doing. All right, man. So that's it for Fluid and Chill NFL edition. <laughs> Don't forget to check out the NBA edition on Wednesdays and obviously mm-hmm. Monday night lives. They've been popping. Yeah, hey, man. You got, you got to get your questions in. Or I'm warning everybody now. You got to get your questions in early because we only have an hour. On Monday, and I mean, I know that we miss a ton of questions. We try to get to as many as we can, yeah. Yeah, uh, but packed, come early man. and set them up. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right. Until next week. Take it light. Take it. Take it.